Welcome everyone to the third episode of Athendia Talks. Today we have a guest with us, Peter Cemueno, and we are going to dive into the world of humanitarian engineering. Uh, Peter is an assistant professor in advanced manufacturing in the Department of Design, Production and Management of the Faculty Engineering Technology here at the University of Twente. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Um, let's start with some personal information, some background information about you. Um, you are assistant professor in design, production and management and more specifically in the advanced manufacturing group. Indeed. Nice. Uh, can you tell us some uh, more uh, info about you? Where are you from? Uh, well, thank you for the question. So uh, I'm originally from Kenya. So I I studied uh, as a background uh, mechanical engineering and then I got a scholarship uh, in 2009 to study my master uh, uh, at University of Leuven in Belgium and then afterwards I got uh, an additional scholarship to study my PhD and uh, post postdoctoral research after that. Great. And uh, when did you take the decision to move abroad uh, for first time? Well, that was uh, in 2009, so uh, by then I was still working as a, a lecturer in uh, one of the universities in Kenya. And then uh, there was a, a cooperation going on between my home university and, uh, and Belgium, and there was an opportunity for a scholarship uh, as part of the cooperation. So that's when I first uh, got the opportunity to uh, study and uh, move abroad to Belgium. Perfect. And I have a double question for you. Yeah. Um, can you spot any cultural differences between Kenya and Belgium and Kenya and the Netherlands later on? Uh, I think I would say perhaps uh, differences between uh, say Kenya and Belgium, but not so much between uh, Belgium and the Netherlands. So I think it can be quite diverse. Eh? So it, it can also be related to how the education is how um, it can also go into uh, the culture that uh, is already there. It can be, there could be some differences there. And can you name uh, some for me? So for instance, uh, like one of the things which uh, I was confronted with uh, when I moved for the first time uh, in Leuven was uh, this culture of having to uh, keep time and uh, being uh, there for appointments uh, quite uh, early. So it's something which I was not used to. But then, yeah, it's something that after some, at some, after some time I was able to get used to it. And is that also present here in the Netherlands? Uh, yeah, I could say that. So I think what I see is a big, an additional difference is uh, how the Dutch are, are straight in uh, how they say things and uh, what the expectations are and what, how they communicate it, which is also quite uh, something I see as a difference uh, between where I came from. Mm -hmm. yeah. And after Belgium, how did you choose for the University of Twente and the Netherlands? Well, uh, it's a good question. So when I was doing my PhD, we already had uh, some cooperation uh, with uh, the engineering technology faculty. So one of my colleagues who I'm currently working with uh, for the Humanitarian Engineering Initiative was organizing uh, small workshops, what, which he used to call maintenance research days. So we had some interactions from uh, 2014 uh, and, and also 2015. And then I also got uh, at least to have some linkages uh, with the research group for maintenance here at University of Twente. Mm -hmm. yeah. And did you experience any practical or educational challenges when you moved to the University of Twente? Yeah, I would say so. So uh, if I look at uh, the education system, uh, for instance, uh, in, uh, in Leuven and also in Belgium, it's a bit, no, in Leuven and also here in the Netherlands, there could be a little bit of differences, although I don't see that much. For instance, uh, we were, I was not yet accustomed to things like oral exams or having to do exams, which is in form of projects. Mm -hmm. So those, I think, were quite uh, some differences, but I think it also brought very interesting perspectives to me as a researcher and also in my how I looked, uh, how I generally view education currently. Yeah, yeah, you touched upon a very common uh, concept of education here in the Netherlands yeah. and specifically at the University of Twente, the project work. Indeed. Students really, really have to work on projects. Indeed. If they don't like that, the university is not a place for them. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So, yeah, that's a good point. And, um, yeah, you told us some uh, info about your background, yeah. who you are. Mm -hmm how you ended up here in the Netherlands and the University of Twente. But now let's dive more into your job and what made you a scientist. Mm -hmm. 
because you are a scientist. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit more about uh, your projects? What are you working currently at as an assistant professor? Well, uh, I started off as uh, my profession. Uh, so what I did for my PhD a lot was uh, in maintenance engineering. So I had projects with uh, companies back home in Kenya. So they were operating power plants. And one of the challenges they had was how do they operate them in a more efficient way so that they can be able to cut down uh, the costs of maintenance. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, a little bit, uh, yeah, so that was much of the work which I did. And I developed uh, tools and protocols which operators of these power plants could be able to use to yeah, use the data they collect and operate them more efficiently. So mm -hmm. this uh, eventually, uh, well, research perspectives uh, were quite helpful um, for my postdoctoral research, which focused a lot on uh, a smart industry. So working along, uh, working with the collaborative robots, because now manufacturing, they're trying to become more agile and uh, they're introducing more robots on the shop floor. But then this also introduces challenges of safety between the operator and uh, when working with the robot. So my research focus currently right now is to develop uh, tools and uh, measures to be able to investigate how uh, these uh, technologies can be designed in a much safer way and interact with the operators or the users in a much safer way. So in that case, I focus a lot. I have projects with companies uh, developing simulation tools, for instance, which can be used for designing workplaces. But I also have uh, projects with uh, other companies to work with operators to develop teaching protocols that can help them better use these robots in industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, very interesting, and I know that uh, at your department you are slowly developing uh, and hardly the, the humanitarian engineering yeah. track. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more on that topic? What are you currently working uh, on on this topic? Yeah, it's, uh, it's also a very interesting uh, dimension to my work now as assistant professor because uh, where I come from, of course, uh, there are quite uh, lots of challenges, especially for underserved communities. And many of these challenges are also technology in nature. So for instance, I like using this example of uh, a community that requires a, a pump for uh, irrigation. So sometimes mm -hmm. the technologies that uh, are currently uh, developed might not be appropriate because these could be communities that don't have maybe access to uh, electricity or they, have, they don't have also uh, the know-how to keep these technologies uh, operating. So that was also one of uh, uh, kind of the catalysts uh, for developing this program together with my colleagues, uh, Alberto, mm -hmm. uh, to look at, okay, how can we harness uh, the technology know-how we have as a university to be able to develop uh, appropriate technologies that can, can have much bigger impact to the society. And uh, in this case, uh, we came up with the ideas of uh, coming up with technologies that can also solve challenges such as water supply, it can also be energy. But then again, now we are realizing that uh, humanitarian engineering is, it's much, is, is a much wider challenge in the sense that it does not only affect the global south, so like where I come from, but also we have new challenges also uh, in Europe and the developing world. So we have climate change, we have drought that is that keeps uh, yeah, becoming quite a challenge and also energy challenges. So then it, we see it as quite a relevant uh, need uh, at this moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and why did you pick this field, humanitarian engineering, instead of something else? Well, uh, I think it's also what it's a discussion we've uh, always had. Okay, how do we as researchers have impact for society? So not mm -hmm. just do research for the sake of getting publications uh, as, as a starting point, but also translating uh, these, uh, yeah, the, the output from our research into uh, artifacts or technologies that uh, will be able to serve and impact uh, the society and especially the underserved in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So then this became uh, an intrinsic, intrinsic motivation also towards uh, the idea which we are now exploring uh, the development of a new master program in humanitarian engineering which will uh, be implemented uh, in 2025 here at the University of Twente. Yeah, and it's very interesting and supportive that you're working at the, at the university at an organization that supports this uh, yeah, technology for impact, research for impact. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I wish you good luck with the development of the program.
we are passing now to the uh, last part of this interview where we try to match what you do with the research that you do and the impact that apparently has with what is happening in our society. Mm -hmm. As you already mentioned, some uh, of the challenges that humanity is facing, yeah. uh, you talked about climate change, uh, lack of resources. Um, can you build upon that a bit? Do you believe people nowadays are sufficiently aware of these challenges? Yeah, I think, uh, so for instance, if you look at uh, uh, the topics of uh, climate change and also circularity, so mm -hmm. I think they, they're the very relevant topics and society is quite aware. But then uh, what I think, what I see in my view is, is sort of a disconnect. So how do you come up with uh, initiatives which will impact society? And in this case, uh, leveraging on, on technology. So I, I can see some effort towards that, but uh, I think there's also a need of uh, an acceleration to be able to uh, reach a good level in which we can be able to harness the technologies that we're developing to better impact society. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think in, uh, in our view, uh, the humanitarian engineering initiative is quite interesting because then it helps us to work together with communities to develop technologies that will positively impact them, but not just that, uh, technologies that they can be able to sustain eh? so, uh, yeah. and, and manage uh, for long-term purposes. So that's what I see as, as the value of uh, what we do. And according to you, failing that challenge, what, did it, what would it mean for the majority of the population? I think if you look at the global trends now, so if I take the example of the global south, uh, the way uh, the, uh, the dynamics uh, of climate change is affecting uh, food production, is affecting uh, drought and all that. So if this is not uh, addressed in, in a rather urgent manner and also with a growing population, then this will uh, become a challenge that uh, will become, it, it can span out of control. So that's why there's a need of urgency as, as researchers and also as engineers to work together with communities to think out of the box and to come up with innovative solutions that can be able to solve long-term impacts of uh, changes that we are experiencing right now. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you for this, uh, all the tips and everything you shared about your research. Sounds very interesting uh, and I'm, I'm personally very interested in the program that will be designed here at the University of Twente, Humanitarian Engineering. So we are at the end of this uh, nice episode and talk with Peter. Um, and if you have more questions about what was discussed today, if you want to address uh, Peter or uh, to ask something about humanitarian engineering at the University of Twente, please feel free to, uh, to drop your question or uh, uh, check our website. And uh, stay tuned for our next episode, which is coming up soon. Bye.